Okay guys, uh, welcome back to the channel. I'm just checking that we still have... Yeah, Brad Abbott sold already, so... Okay. So, welcome to uh, this Barnsley Manager mode. We're doing it on world-class difficulty, as that is historically what I have done in FIFA. Um, a little bit about uh, how many times we've done this. We started... Uh, the first time I ever did something like this was This Is Football on the uh, PS1. This is football was amazing. You could make your team from the ground up. You could do your logo and pixel art. You could design your kits. And then you could take that team and sub it into any league, play through, win the trophy, then take them out, put them in another one. You could uh, you had a trophy cabinet so you could add them all up. It was really cool. But that was long before I was interested in football. Um, I hated it as a kid. And then uh, when I was about 19 maybe, uh, a girlfriend's mom bought me Pro Evo 6 on the cheap somewhere. And I just happened to investigate the Master League, and the Master League was one of the things that convinced me to be interested in football. Um, I am an Aston Villa fan, I know, it's terrible, I feel bad every single day. Um, <laughs> but uh, we're sticking, we're sticking by them, of course. So yeah, I then moved from Pro Evo 2006 Master League on the top difficulty, which got too easy to FIFA 08, and at that point I... You know, we couldn't do a Master League thing, so I had to, like, decide how I was going to make it challenging and interesting. And the way I did that was to start in League One <clears throat> with a random team. And in my case, it was Carlisle United. I picked Carlisle on the basis of their kit and their logo and the fact that Ian Hart played for them. Uh, all of those things I loved. Uh, so that's why we played with Carlisle. And we worked our way up from League One and World Class. Um, and we've basically done that ever since. Uh, last time uh, we played was actually FIFA 14, and FIFA 14 had access to the Creation Center, which was amazing. We made uh, CE Corsairs, they were called, referred to as pirates in the commentary. And they were like <clears throat> the rules for CE Corsairs that I imposed upon myself because I didn't want to make it unrealistic. I didn't want to be above the difficulty level or anything like that. So the rules were uh, I picked Northern Irish players because I'm Northern Irish. Uh, less than 65 overall. Uh, we were allowed one older guy who was up to 70 overall, but he had to be over 35 years old. And that would sort of simulate this, you know, work or this old war horse in the middle of your midfield who kept you going for the first couple of seasons and then you'd have to replace him and it was a big deal and stuff. So I just wanted to simulate what it was like to play with a League One team while still having some level of customization. We got to make three different kits, which were all stunning. <laughs> My friend Lee and I were doing it, and it got to the point of, like, you know, real fashion, real fashion talk. You know, this grey stripe really sets the whole thing off, man. <laughs> Just the phrases that we never thought we'd say. So I loved that. I loved that you could design your logo. I made it my band logo. Uh, you could put your own sponsor on the shirt. And because I'm a huge fan of things like The Wire and Deadwood and Generation Kill and The Sopranos and Six Feet Under and whatever, HBO Original Programming was our sponsor. Um, and then I made myself, again, under 65 overall. My mate Lee, under 65 overall. And uh, we added Hong Chul to the team, who's a left back, South Korean left back, who has played for every one of our manager mode teams since FIFA 08. Uh, we found him there, I think he was a right back. At that point, he was right footed and everything. Uh, and we got him because he was super cheap wages. And the old FIFAs, the South Korean players, tended to be above the overall level of players you could get in other countries. Or well, South Korean were one of the groups of players that were like this that cost less and had lower wages than their actual value. So I love these guys like Lee Sung Yul, Park Chi Young, and Hong Chul. Uh, so because Hong Chul was with us for so long, we uh, we, we just put him onto that C Corsairs team. He was actually under 65 at the time. So uh, moving into FIFA 16, I got this for Christmas, and uh, my little brother, who's amazing, got it for me. He really, this is a good gift for me. Um, and I was excited, and I, my main concern was, am I going to have to remake C Corsairs for the FIFA 16 so I get the updated versions of the players? Is that going to fuck everything up? Uh, this this sort of issue. But it turns out the issue is that in FIFA 16, the creation, the creation center does not exist. They just went, oh, fuck you guys. I know it was really good and you loved it, but screw you guys. You can't have it this game. 
<clears throat> we'll maybe give it back to you in FIFA 17, so you have to buy that. Which made me really angry and disenfranchised me completely, and I did not want to play the game. Straight up, no interest in playing the game as a result, and I felt really bad when he got like when I found this out. I was like, oh shit, he's got me on Steam. He's not gonna, <laughs> he's not gonna see me ever playing it. But uh, I played a couple of pro games with with my guy, and it was really fun playing online with just just as one player with people. So check that out if you have the game; it's really fun. And it made me like the game enough to go, well, maybe it's worth it. Let's look at the League One teams. Let's look at their kits. Let's see how it goes. By the way, the reason I picked League One is because you could potentially get relegated. Otherwise, I would definitely pick League Two. But I like the fact that you can go down. You never do, but just that possible reality in the future is is a nice thing to have um so yeah i looked through the league one teams to find somebody with a half decent kit or badge and it turns out they're particularly terrible this year carlisle are not a, not good enough and i felt that really upset me because i played as carlisle three times i think and i really like playing with carlisle but they sort of ruined it for me the kits aren't great didn't like it so um there i think there were three teams maybe that were feasible in terms of how they looked but i eventually went for barnsley because barnsley have a black kit that's really cool and that's well above the league one kit tiering <clears throat> and then they have a red uh, kit that's perfectly serviceable and i think that combination was basically not in place in any other team the other reason we were drawn to Barnsley was because uh, they have Luan Nyatanga, who is a Welsh centre-back, left-footed Welsh centre-back, who we actually signed either for C Corsairs or for Carlisle in FIFA 12. I can't remember which. Um, but he's a familiar player to me. I liked him. I used him quite a bit. So that was nice to have, a, to have a familiar point. But I still wasn't convinced and still didn't give a shit enough. So I decided if I put Hong Chul on and he can be captain and I make... Uh, linebacker Dirge and Lee Cameron uh, from the old team and again make them less than 65 overall uh, then I'm into it and I convinced myself on this basis I went in Hong Chul is in fact actually over 70 which is a little bit disappointing but I thought fuck it I don't care enough to really be losing him so we, we put Hong Chul on that's the main point of concern if you want to be really like militant about difficulty and stuff Hong Chul is too good for our team so that's that's the clause i wanted to put out there before but otherwise um this is world-class difficulty we're going to play in league one we're not gonna <clears throat> we're not going to do rematches or anything we're just going to play through if we lose in the first round of the johnson's paint then we lose in the first round of the johnson's paint right so uh original barnsley players who still exist on our team slight note on the interface this looks prettier but is absolutely nightmarish to work around um it's very frustrating that they did this but whatever <clears throat> so there's dirge 64 overall cameron 64 overall long chill unfortunately 73 overall well we love them so we had to we had to have them uh <clears throat> so original players still on this team are the keeper uh davies Davies seems perfectly reasonable. His kicking, goalkeeper kicking, is weak, which we're not concerned about at all. And in fact, are kind of happy when I, I'm kind of happy when I see people with low GK, GK kicking, because it means that their average might be slightly lower, like their overall might be slightly lower as a result than it should be, because we don't care at all about kicking. Uh, the other ones are what matters. So Davies seems fine. I mean. Age is, oh my god, how many times do I have to do this before I learn? This changes, by the way. This is terrible, the way they've organized this, because this is different from when you look at it from other views. Like, they organize them differently. Like, in the scouts, they organize them differently. And in is it match team management, they organize them differently again. So there's three iterations of how they lay out the stats, and that is just disorientating. So oh, yeah, his uh, age is 23, so he's fine. Uh, Davies is going to be decent enough for us, so we're going to hang on to him for now. Uh, not too concerned about goalkeepers normally. You see here, I can't get the Coetzee. On a normal list, I would just press up, but I had to do that to get the Coetzee. Anyway, Wabara is uh, a right back who's an 
on Barnsley. I think he came in this season. Uh, he's quick enough. He doesn't have that much stamina. He's got good strength, though. He's six foot tall. And yeah, I mean, just does the thing. So he's one of the highest rated players on our team. So we're definitely going to be playing Wabara. We also have Williams, who's a right midfielder. I'm playing him more as a winger. Uh, his crossing's okay, but we'd like it to be better. His work rates are good. He's fast. He's actually uh, pretty good stamina-wise and not terrible strength-wise, uh, given the role we're going to be using him for. Uh, he dribbles well. And he crosses okay. So, yeah, I mean, three-star weak foot is normally our cutoff with uh, most outfield players. Uh, I look for four-star weak foot in, in as many as possible. Um, because it can't improve, that's the one thing. Like weak foot cannot improve, whereas most other stats can. Uh, this is uh, Hurahan, probably the other really good player on the default Barnsley team. He's 24 years old, left-footed, four-star weak foot, central and left midfielder. Uh, long shot taker, he's just going to do the things we want. He's got good stamina, decent strength. Uh, he's quick enough more. It's acceleration that I care about than sprint speed with central midfielders, but it's okay. Long shots are good. Passing's wonderful, which is what we really care about here, and his standing tackle is also decent. So we think uh, I think Hurahan's pretty good, and he's going to hang around. And those are the four first-team players who remain after uh, our initial sales. Um, we can look. We'll look at the sales after, just so we have like this is going to be an intro the series so everyone can get orientated with regards to the team so we'll look at them in a minute uh harris is uh only on loan till january um but he seems pretty decent left midfielder good crossing we don't really care though he's just he'll just do until we have to let him go watkins is uh, one of the better players in the team he's a three-star weak foot right left midfielder or striker i didn't actually know the striker before so that's kind of useful you may actually need to use that because in January our third string striker is he's on loan as well so he'll go um he's quick uh good balance is great for these roles um stamina is good strength is actually pretty decent given what we're going to use him for again uh, crossing's okay which is what we really care about here uh passing's good so yeah, he seems a reasonable player, 24 years old, not going to get much better, but that seems fine. Skyen's a very young guy. Well, he's not actually that young, 22 years old. Uh, amazing work rates, <clears throat> right-footed central midfielder. Oh my god, how many times? Uh, yeah, they also change how you move between the windows in every iteration, so this is why this happens. Uh, so mainly the thing about Skyen we like is that he can pass the ball, he can tackle, um, got a little bit of strength, and he's got uh, got good balance. So and long shot taker is a bonus. He's a kind of player who definitely works as a backup for a central midfield and central defensive midfield. So we're gonna keep him around for now. Uh, this is a player we signed, uh, Bray. <clears throat> I'm not sure if that's how you pronounce it, but I'm assuming so. He's from England. Maybe it is just Bree. Uh, he's a six foot, of, a six foot right back, 17 year old. Three star weak foot is fine. Work rates are okay. Um, but in general, he's pretty good. His acceleration, sprint speed are good. His strength's good. <clears throat> I like having a six footer right back that's also quick. Really, we want him to cross, which he's not great at, but his standing tackle is perfectly fine uh, for his level. And at 17 years old, he's going to be good. I checked out his potential. It's pretty reasonable. And here's who we talked about earlier. Luan Nyatanga, uh, left-footed centre-back, 6 foot 2 um, Definitely at his peak, basically. So he's just going to be our substitute centre-back, which is perfectly fine. Or second-string centre-back. Uh, Wilkinson's on loan. Carnario is just terrible enough that we have to sell him. Abbott's already sold. We're just waiting for the actual transaction to go through. Carnario is the last player we can sell that we're willing to. Uh, and I think we will. I'm going to use the money from both of these guys. We've done all our transfers now, so <clears throat> the money from both of these guys is going to be used either for a free agent right now, or it's going to be used to get a player who's out of contract in January. Um, I think probably the latter, because the team's okay at the minute. Um, these guys are all on loan. Basically, everyone with a face here is on loan. Uh, and they leave in January, I think. Like I said, Abbott's sold. 
Excuse me one sec. So Smith is our backup left back. Um, Smith seems perfectly fine. I hate that he doesn't have a face. That's one of the things you will notice about this team. I've moved out a lot of guys on the basis of them not having faces, and that's what will uh, cut Skyen from the team eventually. Uh, these guys, unfortunately, because of it not being creation center, we can't can't get around them having no faces. But it's fine if it's only them. All the guys we signed had faces. Um, so yeah, but Smith won't play very often because one of Hong Chul's biggest advantages is his stamina. Uh, in our last C Corsairs campaign, I like after the season was finished, I actually checked out of interest to see how many games Hong Chul played. He missed nine games in all competitions across an entire season. So I don't think we'll super need a backup left back. So Smith's fine for now. Uh, Roberts, we had to hang on to because he joined this season. He seems fine. Uh, Mawson, I think the same, but also we needed to keep Mawson because we needed a centre back of that standard. Uh, Townsend's on loan. Uh, Walton joined this season, I think. I obviously wanted to sell him because he's pretty tragic um and has no face uh but we are going to put him on loan i think before the end of the transfer window then signings in order we did vegas uh vegas is a six foot tall center back he's uh left footed i think yes he is um also plays left back three star weak foot is good for a center back um six foot is what we want long throw him we don't care about at all because he's never going to do it um but he is great jumping, decent speed for a guy his size, his stamina is good, his strength is great for somebody who is only uh, 18. Uh, he's got good ball control, which matters at the back. You sort of forget about things like that. Heading accuracy, his passing is good, and his tackling obviously is good, which is important to us. So uh, this was a no-brainer. He's got a potential of around 80. He's just perfect for the team. He does everything we want. Uh, he was 1.4 million and 10 bucks because we had to outbid somebody. <laughs> we got in a bidding war for him. Um, Kowatsi, this is amazing that we got Kowatsi. Kowatsi was in the free agents. His wage was 3,400 in the end. Uh, very reasonable. Uh, he's again an 80. I think his potential is 83 actually. He's again 18. He's much smaller, which I don't like in a centre back. We really don't like playing a 5 foot 10 centre back. <clears throat> Jordy Amath is a good example. He just I never always looked at and never signed in the previous game because he just wasn't just was too big a deal to get a smaller guy. But out of free agency, he's got a four star weak foot, he's eighteen years old, he's already brilliant at his interceptions, he's incredibly quick, he's actually got decent strength despite his speed and size. He's got top level marking already, he's got great standing tackle. I mean, this guy, and he passes the ball well. I mean, this guy is just our ball playing center back. He's going to be good forever. Superb acquisition. Very pleased with it. Check it out if you're just starting. Uh, you may be able to get a hold of him. Keep in mind when you look up stuff on FIFA that you have to work out what version you're playing with because every week they do the update and it changes things and you have to start. You have to work out what point you started at. Um, and as a result, when you go to like, there's a really great website called fifascoutingtips.com. There's a guy there who goes through high potential players who are cheap and like lower league gems is a really good feature. Although lower league gems currently only exist for FIFA 15. Hopefully you'll do one for 16. Um, but the issue with that is sometimes the values will be very different from what his experience was because you're playing that slightly different version of the game. So keep that in mind. You may not be able to get Kowatsi out of uh, free agency. Um, who else have we got? Uh, we signed uh, Bolchevich. Um, and Bolchevich, well, you can see why I signed Bolchevich. Bolchevich costs 380 grand. He is 19 years old, six foot tall winger, which is already pretty cool if he does all the things a winger does as well as being six foot. He plays on both sides. He's left footed by default. His work rates are fine. And he has a five star weak foot, which is incredible. We love five star weak foot. Um, got no specialities or traits, but he's quick, which is, again, when I say what a winger should do, they should be quick and they should cross. These are the two main things. 
and he's quick and he can cross he's going to need to improve there to be really a threat but that's great he dribbles well he finishes well and the fact that he's uh so good on the weak foot means we will we'll be able to play him on the right hand side as well crossing off his right foot and cutting in on his left foot so i really like bolchevich i think for 380 grand i have he's three grand wages i think that was really really strong i think it was a superb acquisition for that money and then we have our first team striker where most of the money went between him and vegas uh Lucas Volinsky is a 22-year-old, six-foot-tall striker. He's right-footed and has a four-star weak foot. A thing that matters for me personally more in strikers than in any other position. Four and five-star weak foot is what you want to see in the striker you're getting. If you get a really good striker, he's got a two-star weak foot. You're going to be sad in the long run, in my opinion, because this guy will get better and better and better, just like your good, your slightly better striker will. But he will also always have that better weak foot performance and that matters a lot in the way we play as you saw with the team structure we play with um we play with a front three uh with two wingers and one big center forward that's like in the previous game our final purchase striker wise was benteke and he was exactly what the team needed so again that's what i'm looking to do that's how we play uh, so Zvolinski fits in really well. Attacking position is great. He's incredibly fast, given that he's six foot tall. Uh, he's extremely strong, which is magnificent. We're so excited about that. His reactions are great. His jumping's great, which is, again, very important, because we're going to be pitching balls into him from the wing. Uh, his ball control is good, which is important. Um, his finishing's good. His dribbling's good. Heading accuracy, which is important. Um, shot power. Volleys. You know. He's got all the good things we need and four star weak foot. So this guy was a big deal. He cost 1.42 million in the end. Um, and his wages, he was very pissy about it. Uh, he was on 15K a week and we upped it to 18K to get him to come. And even then it took a couple of, uh, like we had to offer it to him three times, I think, for him to agree it. But uh, very, very happy. His over his potential is 80 over, like, uh, at his peak. So uh, when, we, when I sign players, I want to sign somebody who is around that level. Somebody who, when we're six seasons in and we've signed, you know, really, really top tier first team players that push them all out, that they're still good enough to be on the second team or the third string, you know. Like, we want them to always be potentially playable if we're signing the guy. We will make the odd signing that is, you know, sort of stopgap, but most of them will be uh, with a view to them getting better in the long run. Uh, so we got, this guy's called Mahmoud Dahoud, which is pretty, pretty good. We like that. Uh, he's a 19-year-old, 5'10", central defensive midfielder with a four-star weak foot. Double thumbs up. He costs 230 grand. Holy shit, double thumbs up. He's got two grand a week wages. Yes, please. That sounds fantastic. He's 60 overall. He's uh, not so fast sprint speed-wise, but extremely fast acceleration-wise, and that is what we care about in the central midfield. Um... His dribbling's good, he can pass the ball well, and he tackles, I believe. Yeah, standing tackle 63 is perfectly fine. So, uh, 19 years old, this guy's a good prospect. He creeps up towards 80 in terms of his potential as well. Um, we're not just going to play him as a backup central defensive midfielder, though. I think because we lack a backup central attacking midfielder, we are going to sell Carnario because he's so shite. Um, I think maybe I see Watkins as a potential central attacking midfielder, but I think De Hood uh, may either play there himself or sit in defensive midfield and push one of the central midfielders forward into that position until we get a better central attacking midfielder. So I thought he was a fantastic um, utility player. <clears throat> we can maybe even cram him in somewhere else. It does just say central defensive midfielder, so we will take a hit stats-wise if we play him anywhere else, but that's fine. It's only when we're really stuck. Um, and we signed... Is that it? No, uh, we signed Moussa Dembele. So Moussa Dembele, this is a different Moussa Dembele than the magnificent Moussa Dembele from Tottenham. Uh, this guy was for uh, on Fulham. Uh, he's 19-year-old, 6-foot-tall, uh, three-star weak-foot striker with terrible work rates. But uh, he's our second string. We just wanted a big guy who's got potential. He's actually got a higher potential than Zwolinski, I think. 
but is starts off in a worse position. Um, he does have long shot taker. He is relatively quick. He is quite strong. He can finish. You know, he does have plenty of qualities we like, but he's uh, not as favoured. He cost us five hundred and fifty grand, and his wages were like three. I think. I. Th I think I saw them in a different iteration. They were slightly lower, and I was a bit disappointed when I found out they were three, but whatever. It's it's what we needed. So that's the team. We'll go and have a quick look at uh, people we sold. Uh, we still have uh, to send Walton, Walton out on loan and Carnario. Uh, we have to sell. All the loanies are... Oops, little. All the loanies are short loan, fortunately. You can see how many guys uh, joined this season that we weren't able to sell. Obviously, Hong Chul, Dirge, and uh, Cameron came in from CE Corsairs, as the uh, powers that be have banned CE Corsairs from competition for the for the foreseeable future. They had to move, along with the manager, which is me. Uh, we also had Watkins, Wabara, Williams, Moss, and Roberts that were all unsaleable. So that's why uh, Roberts and... Uh, just Roberts. That's why Roberts is still here. Maybe Watkins would have been a potential sale. Um, just because I don't think he's that great. And it would clear a lot of our wages. And we'd probably get about a million for him. Could pay for another really, really high level player. But yeah, these guys are all short loans. So we're going to lose them in January, I believe. And the central midfielders don't matter. Uh, so much definitely losing our third string striker just for those desperate situations and Harris is a pretty big deal so we need to we're gonna have a view to picking up some guys out of contract in the position of winger and probably goalkeeper because I mean we're gonna lose Townsend but we're also gonna probably sell the really really terrible goalkeeper he's on up for loan Walton so yeah uh, guys, we did sell if we go to transfer negotiations. <clears throat> so we're just waiting for Abbott to go through. Uh, here we go. So biggest biggest guy that we got rid of is Winnell. Uh, <clears throat> I think it's Sam Winnell. Uh, Sam Winnell is decent enough, but he has no face. As you can see here. Note that this format for looking at stats is different from the other one and that we use the triggers instead of the right stick to go between them and how fucking annoying and stupid and ridiculous that is. Uh, but uh, for him, we managed to actually squeeze out 650 grand from a 525 grand valued player, which is superb. In reality, we actually got like 600 from it, but that's still very strong. And we cleared 4K of our wages. Um, <clears throat> Williams, uh, right back, he did have a face. Uh, we don't like his face, and he is quite a good player, but uh, we figured with Wabara and Bray, this guy doesn't really have the potential. Wabara is significantly better, so he was the one he was chucked. Um, <clears throat> we got 110 after they took their tax out of it and cleared two grand their wages. Maris, just a terrible striker that we managed to get 100, 100 grand out of. Um, Dibble, pretty good backup goalkeeper, but not as good as our first team goalkeeper. Really, you don't need two goalkeepers, especially if we've got one on loan. So I figured because of the amount of money we could get for him, that was important. And this money basically paid for like Mahmoud Dahoud. Um, between, say, Dibble and Phoenix paid for him, whatever. <clears throat> uh, we actually got significantly more than the value on Dibble, I will add. Uh, Phoenix, truly terrible. Um, we were lucky to sell him. Kasuri, also truly terrible. Lucky to sell him, never mind. Get his value. Cowgill, sell him to Derry. Don't know why you guys want him, but I guess. I mean, Cowgill's actually pretty good. Um, for a League One centre-back shit backup dude. He's only 18 years old. He'd potentially be decent. Digby was probably the only real player other than Winnell. Um, Digby's quite good, but in fact, he's, I, I like Digby quite a lot, but <clears throat> I just wanted to do what I wanted to do and to be able to get Zwolinski in and Vegas. Both of those guys were contentious, difficult to get in. Uh, selling Digby actually made it so we could not only get them in, but also sign Dembele to have that extra striker, which 
uh, let us sell Winnell was the other part. So there's a bit of shuffling, and uh, we maybe sold. I th I think Digby's probably the only player I sold that I really um a little bit sad about. Okay, so I think that's us. Um, our current transfer, you see how tight this was? <laughs> we did some good calculations. Um, so we're going to have uh, Abbott sold after this game, and uh, then we're going to try and sell Carnario and put Walton out on loan. Uh, but other than that, I think we're good. Um, we're just going to start playing the game and having the fun. You guys can uh, check out on YouTube for the previous three matches of this season uh, at the channel for Linebacker Vile. You can get the link down below. We also have them in highlights if you want to check that out. That has Facebook, Twitter, all these links are attached. And um, what else we got? We got some music. We got, yeah. You can check out all the things. Uh, please, please, please follow the channel and you'll be able to see episodes of this as we go through. I think it's really fun. To be honest, I uh, watch the manager mode stuff. I quite like it. And it's quite interactive because you guys can suggest players that you really think would be good for us and that we can afford and stuff and get involved. So, so hang on. Why are we playing West Brom? Okay. This is going to be awful, I think. Okay, so Bolchevich can't play. Well, we still have Harris, so that's perfectly fine. This is going to be really, really, really difficult. 